that you brought up basically patreon saved you yeah you've got a very interesting business model and that was one of the things that i noticed right away and actually going to the youtube and everything else you haven't done it in a while but you would have self-help not self-help but helping other band videos and things of that nature, yep. which I'm assuming were part of the Patreon ideology and what have you. Yep, exactly. So, yeah, uh, yeah it, I mean, just a little bit about your business model. Cause I, yeah, so it's, it's, um, I, I, I did a lot of, I basically did a lot of investigation when, when Lords, you know, as, as we were coming up in, uh, in, in the scene, um, I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to make the band successful. And so I did a lot of in investigation, a lot of research, a lot of reading um, about different aspects of the music industry. It's one of the things that I actually really enjoy, um, just learning about the music industry in general. Uh, and I I learned a lot of stuff the hard way and I learned a lot of stuff, um, you know, through mistakes. And uh, eventually what we what we settled on because I, I guess I should preface this with like, we're in a weird moment in history with music where previously, you know, the, 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 the standard thing to do would be to play a lot of shows, get the attention of an a &R representative from a major label, hopefully get signed, you know, put out an album, go into debt, go on tour, and then hope that you, you know, that the, the label likes you and that you're making enough money in order for you to, you know, to make the next record, to go out on tour again, to do that sort of thing. Nowadays, you know, with the advent of uh, streaming, um, with the, the less of an emphasis on CD sales and physical media, uh, labels are really hurting and labels have a hard time offering the same sort of perks that they did in the past. And so much so that they will offer bands things th that are called 360 deals where they own a piece of everything you do, no matter what, no matter what it is, you know, so your CD sales, your merch at shows, your touring, your, your YouTube revenue, your Spotify revenue, you know, they own a, a, a chunk and usually a large chunk of just about everything that you do. Um, and the, there's really no, no real upside anymore to to signing with a major label besides PR and publicity and this sort of ethereal stamp of approval that you get from being on a major label. You know, you could you could contact a, a festival and say, hey, I want to, you know, play your festival and you you get no responses. And then the next day, exact same band, exact same sound, exact same album gets signed to nuclear blast or century media or something like that. And then all of a sudden, Oh, the festivals are interested. Now it's that weird ethereal stamp of approval, you know, that, that gatekeeper mindset that people have through with the, uh, with the labels. That's really the only thing that, that labels provide to you. And in exchange, you give up like 90% of your income. Well, most bands are are trying to, you know, get bigger. And even if you're, whether or not you're trying to attract the the attention of a label, uh, bands or businesses that that have expenses, you know, you, you have to, maybe you have to pay for practice space. You definitely have to pay for transportation. You have to pay for gas and strings. And, you know, if you want to upgrade things, like say you want to move to in-ear monitoring, which I think all bands should absolutely be jumping on. Um, if you want to do that, it's extremely expensive. It's, you know, and where does that money come from? It probably doesn't come from selling, you know, your $15 t-shirts if you're only playing to 10 people or 20 people every night. Not to mention the fact that you have to make like 50, 60 t-shirts, you know, and that's that's an expense right. from the get-go, right? So my my whole approach to um to the band was uh was trying to take the aspects of the, the the patronage model that has become very popular uh, on YouTube. You see a lot of YouTubers using Patreon uh, as as a model for revenue. And for those of you, for those people who are uh, unfamiliar with Patreon, essentially it's like a patron of the arts model. It's like the old school. You know, one super rich dude gives Michelangelo uh, every everything he needs and just says, "Make art all day. That's your job now." Um, it's like that, except it's expanded uh, across instead of one person doing it, 
you know, it's a couple hundred or a couple thousand people giving you a dollar or two dollars or five dollars a month or ten dollars a month. And then in exchange, they get, um, you know, this prize, that prize, that kind of a thing. So I started that up and almost immediately we were one of we were one of the very first bands to do it and really um, put a lot of energy and time into it. And immediately we saw the results um, you know, happen overnight. And, and I'll tell you one thing it's as a, as a band, you don't, ex if, if you're, if you're at a day job, right, you have a monthly income that you expect and you would never do a day job. Most people would never do a day job where they don't know exactly what they're going to get paid every month. And they don't know how they can budget for X, Y, or Z because they have no idea how much money they're getting this month. But with bands, they operate in that, in that frame. They have no idea they might get a ton of money this month. They might get zero dollars this month. Being able to change it over to say, oh, my God, we are getting, you know, two thousand dollars this month. We're getting two thousand dollars every month. We have a budget now. We we know what we can expect to to budget for, what we can expect to buy. It, it's changed the way that we look at our business completely. Um, and it's also provided a lot of really amazing uh, guilt money. Uh, at you know going towards us so what what i mean by that is like every when we started a patreon you know we 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 started and then we we'd make, we'd make like 50 dollars a month and then i'd be like oh my god we just got 50 bucks uh um shit what if what we haven't done anything for them lately uh what, what do we do what do we I, I gotta do something and then i would be i would i would come up with something creative to like you know to make or to to do for the patreon backers and that would attract you know, 50 more backers. And now we're making a hundred dollars. And I'm like, Oh no. Oh my God. I got to do even more crap, crap, crap. And I come up with something and, and the cycle basically continues to the point where now we're making three, $3,000 a month. Um, we're the number one, most, uh, backed independent, uh, uh, heavy metal band on Patreon. Uh, and, and and it, it can the cycle of guilt money continues <laughs> where it's uh every time I get that that payment, I'm like, crap, 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 crap. I gotta think of something to do for these people or they're gonna leave me. Um, you know, and so it's 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 made possible so many amazing things. The Japan tour, the European tour, our in-ear monitoring system, but it's also birthed uh, a lot of incredible content that's now kind of standard stuff that we do our our, our live streaming our trident casts our covers of other bands our youtube series uh words of fang um all that sort of stuff came out of the guilt money from the patreon uh and it's it's basically helped to fuel us into the band and into the the kind of media force that we are today so it's so that's why when you see pretty much anything we put out all roads lead back to Patreon. You'll see at the beginning and end of every single one of our videos, you know, a one second thing like support the band on Patreon. Um, you, you see links to it everywhere because it's so important for us. It's our number one driver, our number one economic driver of the business. So we put as much thought and attention and time as we possibly can into making the Patreon the, like the coolest place for people to be. Um, and, and with that, um, also comes the idea of, as I said earlier, a lot of bands are still kind of stuck in this mindset of like, I want to sign to a, a label so I can get famous and, you know, tour the world and blah, 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 blah. And a lot of bands don't, A, don't understand what they're asking for or what that means. And B, don't really understand if that is what they want, don't really understand how to get there. Most labels don't send you know, a &R representatives out to random shows and they just pick, you know, bands that are doing well. Most labels will wait for you to have a sizable fan base, a sizable following before they even consider talking to you about signing to a label. Um, and in order to get there, you really have to be business savvy. You have to know what the music industry is, is doing and, and what direction it's going. And you've got to be comfortable with trying new things and, and, and essentially making mistakes. And that's where that's where a lot of my DIY um, ethos comes from. And a lot of the the words of Fang videos that I create 
are essentially sort of love letters to an, an earlier version of Ty, like, like, don't do this anymore, you know, like, like, learn from your mistakes. And hopefully by putting that out there and putting the instruction out there for other bands and other people, they don't have to go through the same mistakes that I did. And, and they can, you know, they can make their bands successful in the cheapest, most DIY friendly way possible. Um, so that everybody so that the scene gets bigger and that everybody has an opportunity to to be successful in whatever way they define. 